Welcome to a mostly accurate summary of Mass Effect. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume you've never played the games and want to understand why everyone in this franchise is so damn horny all the time. Or it's 2035, Mass Effect 4 is finally out and you need to refresh. I was kind of in the same boat a while back, as I'd only picked up Andromeda in 2019 and didn't get around to the main series until 2022, so you could say I was late to the party. But once I'd finished them and answered these questions holding my one remaining brain cell hostage, I figured a few people might find it helpful to have a condensed version of the story. Before we jump in, let's establish some of the basics of this world. Number one. Faster than light travel exists, but longer distances are covered using Mass Effect relays, which are basically fast travel points to a bunch of places across the galaxy. Two, most of the galaxy is governed by the Citadel, a group of allied species intent on having the most useless politicians in power. Three, humans are the new kids on the galactic stage and everyone seems to dislike us. Four, it should come as no surprise that aliens are everywhere. The main ones we come across are the Asari, Salarians, Turians, Krogan, and Quarians. 5. I'm only covering the main plot points here. These games are full of lore and side missions and so much more, but if I went into everything we'd be here for hours. And 6. There are so many decisions to make in these games right from the off and it's very hard to tell which ones actually matter while you're playing, so some sections I mentioned might be inaccessible depending on what choices you make. Anywho, with that all laid out, let's blast off into this crazy galaxy. Mass Effect. Our POV character, Commander Shepard, gets a message that human colony, Eden Prime, is under attack, so we swip on over with our good buddy Caden and start fighting a bunch of robots called Geth and their leader, Saren. Shep and Caden pick up Ashley while giving chase and find an ancient psychic hard drive left by a prehistoric race called the Protheans. Shepard activates it and almost short circuits their brain, but gets a confusing vision before passing out. Back on the ship, the crew zoom off to talk to the Citadel Council and we get to that Saren is a spectre, basically space black ops with no oversight. Because that could never possibly go wrong. Saren is bad and working with the Geth. Yeah right, you're just jealous because you're human. Fine, I'll prove it to you. Shepard hops around the Citadel and picks up some new crew members, Garrus, Rex, and Tally. Conveniently enough, Tally has evidence of Saren's betrayal, so Shepard takes it back to the council and is like, suck it benches, I was right. And for once, the council actually does a thing. Unfortunately, that thing is to make Shep a spectre and tell them to deal with the problem, because the council wouldn't know what responsible governance is if it slapped them in the face with a wet fish. We grab our last crew member, Liara, who's T-posing to establish dominance, and hop around the galaxy, chasing down leads and such, none of which really matters, until Shep and co. touch down in Vermeer, that looks like a very nice place for a holiday, to meet up with a Salarian espionage team. They want to destroy a nearby facility where Saren is creating an army of Krogan immune to the genophage, a biological weapon used by the Citadel Council to keep the Krogan population down. The idea of losing a cure for this gets Rex all heads up and Shep either talks him down or he's killed by Ashley. Bleh. Side note, I didn't realise that conversation was so significant the first time I played and Ashley shot Rex, so I full on went back to my last save file and played again just to keep Rex around. The Salarian squad goes around the front as a distraction with Caden or Ashley joining Joining them, our team sneaks in the back and finds another one of those Prothean storage devices that gave Shepard a vision. Shepard isn't known for their caution, so activates this one too, gets another vision, but thankfully doesn't break their brain. Suddenly, a hologram of Saren's ship appears and gives us a lore dump. So I'm actually a reaper, we harvest organic life every 50,000 years, so you may want to give up now. Okay, bye! This is getting ridiculous. We have all of five seconds to process this before remembering that we're supposed to be planting a splody device. Shep leaves Caden to deal with the boom boom and runs off to help Ashley, but we get a call halfway there, Caden is also under attack and needs help. Time stops as we weigh up our options, only one of them can be saved. We have to make a tough choice. Which of them do we pick from these two good friends you- Caden. Wait, this is supposed to be a big thing that you have to think long and hard about. She killed Rex, screw her, I'm saving my boyfriend. Fine. Shepard goes back to help Caden and gets confronted by Saren on a little floaty platform. Saren is all like, What are you talking about? The Reapers are amazing. I love them so much, Uwu Reaper Senpai. Nah, mate, they are such bad news. Naturally, this conversation ends in shooting before Saren escapes. Shepard's crew, minus Ashley, or Caden, gets back to the Normandy and the facility explodes. Liara helps unjelly Shepard's vision jam, which points to a lost mass relay Saren was after on a planet called Ilos. 
They take all this info to the Citadel Council and are all like, Right, get ready to defend yourselves, I'm going to Ilos. We know you've been right about everything so far, but the plot says we have to be useless jerks, so we're going to stop you from taking your ship and bury our heads in the sand. How did you lot get in power? The human ambassador, Udina, sells us out for a political leg up too. Shepard kind of says, frick that, and takes the Normandy anyway. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. On Ilos, the crew lands at a Prothean facility and talk to the computer that ran this place. We get a big old lore dump, none of which really matters here, except that this lost mass relay can take us straight to the Citadel, so obviously we do that. Back on the space station, Saren and his minions are attacking, we make chase and take him out pretty quickly, or convince him to Sudoku himself. Well that was anti- oh wait, no, the Reaper ship is reanimating his corpse. Now we have an actual fight with the Saren puppet and destroy it for real this time. This gives the defending ships outside time to take out the Reaper itself. The game ends either with the council thanking you for saving their lives, or a new council being set up, but Shepard knows there's bigger problems to deal with and flies off into the sunset. Mass Effect 2. It's a few weeks after the end of the first game, and the Normandy crew is chasing down a few of Saren's remaining Geth, when suddenly they're attacked by an unknown enemy. Shepard gets everyone onto the escape pods before being blown out into space, and 10 minutes into the sequel, credits are rolling. Yeah, Shepard straight up dies. Hungus Bunga, you're 10 feet under. Thankfully, this is science fiction though, and we get a montage of Shepard's body being put back together. Shepard wakes up two whole years later in the middle of a fight on a space station, because Shep can't catch a flipping break. They shoot some robots, meet Jacob and Miranda, before flying off to yet another space station to meet the boss, called the Elusive Man. Not much has happened in the last two years except for another vaguely named enemy called the Collectors, who have been abducting human colonies and maybe they have something to do with the Reapers. The latest raid was in Freedom's Progress, which Shepard gets a quick shuttle over to investigate with our new crew members. They run into Tally, who has a reasonably a reaction of what the f you died. We team up briefly and get some info from the only survivor, a Quarian who happened to be on the colony at the time. Back at the Cerberus base, Shepard tells the elusive man what they find, we get a new Normandy, complete with Joker and an AI called Edie, and set off into the galaxy. New ship also means some new crew, so we grab Morden, Jack, Grunt and Garrus. The elusive man tells us to get over to Horizon, another human colony, Sharpish, as they've just been invaded by the Collectors and it so happens that Caden or Ashley's station there, depending on who you saved in the first game. Shepard and co drop down, fight off the invaders, and keep on fighting this one called Harbinger, who's really annoying because it won't shut up no matter how many times you defeat it. We also get the cold shoulder from our old crewmate. Why are you working with Cerberus? To be fair, they did bring me back to life, but I'll admit they're hella shady. I need to process this, so I'm going to reappear in the next game. Back on the ship, the elusive man lives up to his name. You let that invasion happen. Yeah, I wanted to see if the collectors were after you specifically. That does not put you in a good light. After that, we go on another recruitment drive, picking up Samara, Thane, and Tally again. With the ship filling up, we get another tip from the elusive man that a collector ship has been disabled and we should check it out. The crew gets there and finds a few things. First, the collectors are actually Protheans that have been bioengineered to work for the Reapers. The stress call is a fake, and this is very clearly a trap. Like they could have put a sign on their door saying this is a trap and it would have been less obvious. You knew that this was a trap as well. Yes, yes I did. You know, it's really hard to like you. Anyway, back on the ship, Edie puts together that the collector base is in the galactic core, where it's so hazardous no one would even think to look there, because they ain't that convenient. As it turns out, Cerberus have a device that can guide Normandy to the collector base, but they found it on an old Reaper ship and the research team there went silent a few days ago. This is easily the creepiest level in the game, as a ton of space zombies jump out of corners on this dark abandoned spaceship that made me jump several times because I'm a complete scaredy cat. The team grabs the device and an unconscious Geth before blowing up the Reaper and making an epic jump onto the Normandy. As the device is being installed, Shepard can wake up the Geth body, called Legion and agree to work together. Most of the main crew leaves the ship on a mission because the plot says so. We play as Joker for a little while as the Collectors attack us again, but third time's the charm for these guys as they abduct everyone except our pilot. Shep return and waste very little time before chasing after the Collectors to rescue the crew. Once there we make short work of the ship that attacked us before, although a few crew members might die if you don't buy certain ship upgrades, and land on the base. The ground team splits in two and makes their way through to look for any of their kidnapped crew members. 
survivors. Whether there are any survivors depends on a few things like if you did other missions before deciding to launch a rescue, so don't wait around too long if you like your crew. The team pushes on after this and finds out all the abducted humans up until now have been liquefied and fed into a great big f off human reaper thing. It doesn't seem to be operational just yet, so we cut its supports, watch it drop down and get ready to blow up the base. The elusive man chooses the best timing ever, contacts us and asks for the base to be left intact, or you can choose to blow it up. I went with the explosion option. You know, to say I'm supposedly picking the good choices, I sure seem to blow a lot of stuff up. Anyway, as we're congratulating ourselves on a job well done, Done, the human reaper thing pops up behind Shep and tries to squish them. Naturally this fails, Shep and co kill the thing before returning to the Normandy, we all look really cool as we're running away from the explosions and in a last glimpse we see that Harbinger is just another reaper controlling the collectors. Back in relative safety, Shep can tell the elusive man to stick it where the sun don't shine, there's a quick shot of the crew and maybe some coffins if not all of your crew survived the last mission, and the last thing we see before the credits roll is that the reapers are starting to descend on the Milky Way. Dun dun dun. Mass Effect 3. Before we start on this one, the names get kind of complicated here as a number of characters may have died during your playthrough. They would have generic replacements as the story needs, but to keep things simple I'm going to assume all possible squad member deaths were avoided in previous games. It's six months later, Shepard is in a meeting with Admiral Anderson and some committee members who don't matter one bit as they're killed one minute later because Hungus Bungus the Reapers are among us. Shep runs back to the Normandy, grabbing Joker, Caden, or Ashley, and Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, I mean our new friend James Vega, on the way. Ooh, and we can jump now. During our escape, Anderson stays to continue the fight against the Reapers here. We also see a little kid board a shuttle that then blows up. Don't forget his face though, I swear to god. There's a brief stop at some Prothean ruins on Mars, we find Liara, plans for a device to take out the Reapers and a buttload of Cerberus goons. One of the goons is a robot we take for later, Caden, or Ashley, is knocked out and we have a quick chat with the elusive man. If humanity controlled the Reapers, we'd be incredibly powerful. Yes, because unchecked power is such a good thing. Next is the Citadel. Caden slash Ashley is dropped off for a nap to get better and Shepard asks the council for help. Obviously they say no, because it's Mass Effect, so we get about gathering some allies. Shepard can get some reinforcements for the Turians, cure the Krogan Genophage, and end a war between the Corians and Geth. Third, details don't really matter, but there's a lot of wholesome team building involved. Shepard is summoned to the Citadel as Ambassador Udina, that jerk from the first game, is doing some weird stuff. Once the Normandy arrives, we're contacted by Thane. A new Cerberus has taken over the Citadel. <sighs> Of course they have. Shep makes short work of booting them out, finding out Udina is trying to perform a coup and meeting Cerberus' top new operative, Kai Leng. He kills our good being Thane, tries to do the same with the alien counselors too, before we get involved and take out Udina instead. Also, Caden or Ashley is back now. Yay! The attack has some benefits, however, as the council is now much more eager to help us out with the Crucible. Next, we're given information on a Prothean artifact on the Asari capital of Thessia, so we head to the temple to find it. The artifact turns out to be one of the psychic hard drives we found in the first game, and we get a big old lore dump that I'm not going to bother with here, this is just a summary after all. Anyway, just as we're about to get the information we need on how to complete the crucible, Kai Leng shows up with a message from, guess who, the elusive man. Are there any more ways you could be a pain in the bum? Now that you mention it, yes. I'm very smart and can control the Reapers, so Leng is going to take this data from you. Unfortunately, Shepard isn't able to hold Leng off, and we watch a heartbreaking moment as Thessia falls to the Reapers. We make chase after Leng to a supposed refugee camp called Sanctuary. After landing, we find the remains of a fight after the Reapers found out about Cerberus' ability to control their ground forces within a short range of the facility. We also find Miranda, who was able to put a tracker on Leng when they had a brief run-in. With the location of the Cerberus base, Admiral Hackett brings some of the human fleet to help the Normandy crew blast through into the base and take out most of Cerberus in the process. On board, Edie helps locate the data and we get the bombshell that the final piece of the Crucible is the Citadel itself. To make things worse, Elusive Man told the Reapers about this and they have taken it, funnily enough, to Earth. There's a quick final showdown against Kai Leng before Shepard heads off to the final battle. Hackett has an inspirational speech for us as all the allies you made during this game gather around for what is possibly one of the coolest space battles in gaming history that I am not going to animate because I am one man so get off my back. As the battle continues in space, Shepard heads down to London to take out the orbital cannons, meet up with Anderson again and grab a lift to the Citadel courtesy of the Reapers. 
This is honestly the roughest part of the series. In the final push, we see allies dropping left, right and centre just for the chance of making the crucible work. There's no glorious war to be found here, just people against a powerful and merciless enemy. Battered and bruised, Shepard makes it to the Citadel with Anderson and finds the elusive man there too. Of course you're here. Kind of required at this point. I can use Reaper to control people a bit, so kill Anderson and I'll take control. How do you still think you're the good guy here? From here we can convince the elusive man to Sudoku himself or Shep takes him out. After that we open the citadel and complete the crucible to be greeted by a vision of the little kid from earlier. Hi, I'm the Catalyst. I made and control the Reapers as a solution to the chaos created by organic life. It explains that organics creating synthetic life, AI, causes conflict and would eventually wipe out all life in the galaxy. So the Reapers come every 50,000 years to wipe out advanced civilizations. However, the Catalyst admits that the Reapers are no longer working and gives Shepard three options for what to do next. We can destroy the Reapers and all the created life in the galaxy, but there is a warning that conflict between synthetic and organic will occur again in the future. We can take control of the Reapers, use them to rebuild and protect the galaxy as a guardian or dictator. Or we can merge robots and people, giving probably the most hopeful ending of both kinds working together. Whichever you choose, Shepard will die. Bleh. We see the Crucible charge and fire, using the mass relays to effect change across the galaxy. But there is also a fourth option. When the choice is given to Shepard, they can turn their gun on the Catalyst and refuse to activate the Crucible. The cycle will continue and the Reapers will succeed. Many years later, we see a time capsule from Liara, explaining everything to whoever watches. The last scene we see is a person and their child, discussing someone they call the Shepard. Mass Effect Andromeda. It's over 600 years later and our new character, Ryder, wakes up from a stasis pod in a new galaxy. All's looking well until our ship, the Hyperion, hits some strange glowy stuff. The proverbial mess hits the fan and we're on cleanup duty. Ryder meets up with their dad on the bridge just as the new home comes into view, the imaginatively named Habitat 7. But dad's the pathfinder and responsible for finding a place for the human colonists to settle, so we head down to see if everything's okay. Turns out everything is not okay, as there's floating mountains, an unbreathable atmosphere, and our shuttle gets hit by lightning on the way down. Ryder survives a crash landing with our new buddy Liam before running off to find allies, shooting the new baddies called Ket. We regroup with Dad and Cora in front of a big tower that's using the glowy stuff from space to mess up the planet. It's being used by the Ket but was actually built by another group called the Remnant because no Mass Effect game is complete without an abandoned ancient civilization. Ryder makes their way into the tower, Dad shuts it down before they're both yeeted off a cliff which breaks Ryder Jr's helmet and Dad gives up his just before we pass out. Ryder comes to back on the ship and the crew tells us that Ryder Sr's last act were to save his child, make us Pathfinder and transfer Sam an AI into our brain. Ryder gets all of five minutes to rest before Hyperion arrives at the Nexus, a forward base and meeting point for other ships with the Andromeda Initiative. We board the Nexus expecting a welcome party but find it mostly empty and only half built. We hit the Scourge stuff as well and things went downhill from there. There's been food and power shortages, no other ships turned up and we had an armed rebellion, so hopefully you can turn things around a bit. As the only Pathfinder available, it's our job to make the Golden World, ruined by the Scourge, livable for colonists, so they give us a ship and tell us to get on with it. No need to find crew this time, along with Liam and Cora, the Tempest comes with Vetra, Lexi, Gil, Subi and our pilot Kalo, and out in the galaxy we grab PB and Drac. Most of the game is spent wandering around the free realm sections, shooting Ket using remnant tech to terraform planets and generally just fix all their problems. Visiting the Nexus at one point we have a chat with the initiative's director, Tan, who comes across as a real suck up but still managed to put all the responsibilities on us because there are very few competent leaders in the Mass Effect universe. Out in space we run into the Ket leader who's all like, Grr, I'm the Archon and you guys don't understand this remnant stuff, but neither do I because I need your help to make sense of it all, so come with me pretty please. The Tempest notes on out there, Sharpish, turns up above a planet called Aya and bumps into some other aliens who seem much nicer to be fair. They introduce themselves as the Angara, Ryder meets their leader and we get a new friend, Jarl. The crew helps looking out for the Moshai, a remnant expert. Naturally, we shoot our way into a Ket facility and come across some kind of religious ceremony that turns Angara into Ket, meaning that the Angara have been fighting their friends the entire time. No time to stop though, so Ryder and co moves to rescue the Moshai and we can choose to leave the facility standing so the prisoners have time to escape, 
or destroy it, killing the other Angara left there. The Tempest heads back to Aya so the Moshe can let us into the vault. There's a galactic map inside which points to a control center for all the vaults, called Meridian, and the Archon has a relic that can guide us there. We find his ship, break in, fall directly into a trap and are confronted by the Archon. Hello, I just needed your AI, so I'm going to copy that and leave you here, bye. Ah, feces. Back on the Nexus, we try to convince Director Tan to assault Meridian, but this is Mass Effect, so naturally that doesn't work. Plan B is to trick the cat with a diversion and sneak our way in, which works surprisingly well. On our way to the control tower, the Pathfinder finds another revelation for the Angara. As it turns out, they were created by the Remnant. We also find out that where we are now is just Meridian's control center, not the full thing. But before things get too comfortable, the crew is attacked by the Kep flagship, so Ryder has a brainwave and turns the station defenses on said ship. Clearly getting annoyed with us, Archon decides to invade the Hyperion and pull the plug on Sam. We're briefly shoved into Ryder's twin, they put a stop to most of Archon's plan, and we jump back into our Ryder, who just decides to activate a flotilla of remnant ships to fight for us. You know, no biggie. No rest for the wicked, however, as Ryder puts out a call to all their allies in Andromeda for a final showdown against the Cat before heading off to Meridian, finding most of the Cat forces and the captured Hyperion there. Ryder and Archon have a sassy video call, but otherwise just have your standard fair epic space battle. There's lots of ships, torpedoes, and they use the Scourge at one point. Meridian turns out to be a hollow planet which the Archon enters on the Hyperion and we follow suit. There's a driving section where we get to see how cool Meridian is and all our allies show up with various quips and one-liners. Ryder finds Archon and our twin in the central chamber, who has a big old I'm better than you speech while we fight through the minions. Eventually, Archon does take control of Meridian, but instead of cool boss fight we just get to fight remnant minions and interface with a few control panels. Woo. It does the job still. Archon is down, our twin is free, Meridian is ours, and there's a bit of sequel bait because the developers really thought they would get another game. And that's all she wrote for now. At the moment all we have is a few rumours on what the next game will be. Will Shepard rise from the dead? Will Ryder make a comeback? Will the governments in Mass Effect be competent instead of idiotic bureaucrats? Only time will tell. Hey thanks for watching. This was quite a video for me to make. I've never done anything quite this big and it took a long time to make considering it was summer when I started the script. But it was something I very much enjoyed and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Just a few quick shout outs. Uh, first of all to Barry Kramer who's Kingdom Hearts video very much inspired this video format. Also thank you to my friends and family who put up with me yabbering on about this video that I'm making for the last six months. I love you all. Uh, have a nice Christmas or other winter festival if you celebrate one and yeah thanks for watching. Bye!